Hello and welcome to the first Football Manager experiment on the channel for Football Manager 2019. Today, we're going to be doing what if a billionaire invested in the National League. So the premise for this experiment is really, really simple. Essentially, I've gone into every single team in the National League. So let's take older shots, for example, and I've purchased the in-game editor from the Steam store. So if you want to do this yourself, you can go to the Steam store, go to the Football Manager page and buy the in-game editor. Once you do that, you can enable it in game and you can see this little pencil icon up here. You click on the pencil icon, edit club details. And in this example, I've gone to Oldershot Town and all the teams in the National League, gone to finances and given everyone a billion pounds bank balance, a billion pounds in the transfer budget and a maximum of five million in the wage budget. So I've done that for every single team in the National League, which is going to be pretty exciting. And essentially, all I do now is go on holiday and see what happens. Now, the main thing that I want to find out from this experiment is how quickly will a team get to the Premier League? Now, for this episode, we're only going to go five years in the future. We're going to go a lot further in the future in future episodes. But in this episode, we're only going to go five years. Theoretically, it's possible for a team to get promoted four times in a row and get to the Premier League within four seasons. Uh, so maybe that might happen. I would imagine in this case, it's probably quite likely that a team who get promoted first will actually have a chance of getting to the Premier League within four seasons. They've been given a billion pounds, which is a huge amount of money. The only limiting factor I think this could have is, for example, if we click on filed, for example, go to their club overview, you can see they've only got a regional reputation. Now, although they've been given lots of money, players may be reluctant to join the club because they've not got a good reputation. They won't be able to buy the best players. Even though they've got tons of money, players just won't really fancy going to file because they've got such a bad reputation. And when I say bad reputation, I mean a reputation that's not as good as, for example, a Manchester United who's got a world-class and, and worldwide reputation. So before we get started then, let me know in the comment section down below, what are your predictions for this experiment? In, in my personal opinion, I think within 10 seasons, we're going to have three teams from a National League in the Premier League. I think within 10 seasons, that is quite likely to happen. On the flip side, I could be completely wrong. I could be absolutely completely wrong, but uh, you never know. So what I'm going to do now is go five years in the future on this episode. Through the power of editing, you'll be able to see this in just a few moments time. Uh, it's going to take all day for me, I think, to, to process because it's a lot of stuff to process uh, for a lot of leagues still because obviously we loaded from the National League South and North because some teams obviously are going to get relegated. So it's interesting to see as well, I think, if a team to get relegated, with a billion pounds, will they bounce straight back up again? So as I was saying, we've got all the English leagues loaded possible, so it's going to take quite a while for me to process it all uh, on my little laptop, for example. But through the power of editing, in about five seconds or so, we're going to be five years in the future. Right then, so here we go. We are now five years in the future. We're actually five and a half seasons in the future. Uh, I let it run just a bit longer by accident. So we're five and a half seasons in the future, technically. Uh, we're going to go and look season by season at the league tables then. So if we go to this first season in the National League, Leighton Orient have been crowned champions of the National League with Gateshead being promoted as winners of the playoffs. Now, we put all the money in at the start of the season, of course, and I didn't expect the National League table to look too dissimilar to what you'd expect in real life. And I think, actually, it does look kind of realistic, this. Despite being given all the money in the world, basically, the table still looks pretty similar. I think Leighton Orient are one of the favourites to get promoted this season. Gateshead should be up there. Uh, teams like Chesterfield, Salford, uh, Ebbsfleet, they should probably be up there. Dover doing quite well in this, although in real life they're not doing particularly well. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, Maidenhead, Haven't, Waterlooville, Barrow and Braintree all getting relegated. I think teams like Braintree and Barrow are sort of expected to get relegated this season. So it's probably quite realistic, this actually. A quick look at transfers in this first season. Not much, but I mean, obviously more than usual is being spent, but not a huge amount being spent. Frankie Kent from Colchester to Dover is the highest fee at £750,000, with Nathan Smith also going to Dover for £650,000. So Dover clearly the biggest spenders. Uh, Salford probably the biggest spenders in terms of number of players bought in. Although Ebbsfleet are up there as well with uh, some, some big names or big money signings at least, at least for this league. Niall Ranger making the move from Swindon to Ebbsfleet actually, that's quite an interesting one. To be fair, there's some good players actually coming down to the National League. So obviously a few players are being drawn by the, these massive wages that these clubs are now going to be offering. Um, some players that probably shouldn't be playing in the National League are playing there right now. Uh, Theo Robinson down there, for example. Tom Pett shouldn't be playing there. He's a very good player for Lincoln City in real life. Uh, Perry and G, he's a pretty good player for Crew as well. So there's a few players being brought down that probably shouldn't be there. Either way, though, we don't want to get too distracted by this first season. There's still four more to look through. But as you can see from the table, not too dissimilar to real life. And it's Leighton Orient and Gateshead who are the teams that we want to be looking for. I think what we're going to do from here on out as well. So uh, when we go to the next season, I'm going to show you the Leighton Orient and Gateshead their positions in League 2 first of all before we look at the National League just so you can see how they've done uh, the promoted sides of course so my hypothesis is that Leighton Orient and Gateshead should get promoted again they've got all the money in the world behind them they've got promotion I reckon they'll probably get promoted from League 2 straight away again so let's see 
if that's true. And it's not true, actually. It's it's not true. They didn't do... In fact, Leighton Orient didn't do particularly well at all. Leighton Orient finishing 19th in their first season in League 2, with, uh, with Gateshead coming in 9th just outside the playoffs. So interesting, that. I really thought they'd take the leagues by storm. I thought they'd go up every single season, but clearly something's gone wrong. That's quite interesting. Perhaps they haven't added to the squad or perhaps they just struggle with reputation. They can't get the players in that they want uh, or perhaps they have got the players in that they want, but because they've brought so many players in, they just haven't been able to gel with each other all season. It's been quite difficult for them to string results together. So that's an interesting one. That's interesting. Perhaps my prediction of, of three teams being in the Premier League by 10 seasons time isn't going to come true. Now looking at the National League now instead, Halifax and Sutton have been promoted in this second season. So some good news for those two sides, of course. Uh, Halifax being Ebsleet for the title on goal difference, which is interesting. I think it's the second time in a row Ebsleet have come second in the league, so they've been unlucky. Uh, Sutton also getting promoted in the playoffs, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, and the teams that have been relegated, Chorley, Concord, Bromley and Telf. Now I feel like Bromley may have been in the league before, or was it Chorley? I feel like one of these teams, because if we sit, look at it in eighth position, Billericay Town are in eighth position. Now they have a team that got promoted the season before from the National League South and they've come eighth and we've not given them any money. So they're doing extremely well. Forest Green and Macclesfield, as you can see here, they're the teams that got relegated from League Two last season. They've come seventh and eighth respectively, uh, seventh and ninth respectively, sorry. So uh, obviously they don't need the money because they've got some League Two quality players in there, but clearly the money's helped these sides uh, get promoted instead of these two. So that's interesting. So another interesting season then, not quite the results we expected in League Two, but uh, some decent stuff in the National League as well. Let's move on another season as well in the National League. So Billericay, crowned champions of the National League. Now, we've not given them any money. We've given them no money whatsoever. But Billericay Town seem to be doing quite well for themselves, despite not being given the billion pounds. They've, they've won the league by by seven points, to be fair. So Billericay doing something right, despite not giving, being given money. Uh, Salford also getting promoted as well, which is interesting. And Macclesfield Town getting relegated down there as well. I've just noticed that uh, alongside Solo Hall Malls, uh, Maidstone United and Spennymore. So Macclesfield feeling the pinch then. Obviously they got relegated from League 2, had no money, did all right last season, but this season have really, really, really stuttered. And uh, you can also argue things as well, like Torquay, they've been promoted and have survived in this league without the money, whereas I think Maidstone and Solo Hall Malls did have the billion pounds, this is interesting stuff, I've got to say. Like, I, I expected it to be quite a lot more simple, basically. I expected the teams to get promoted from the National League to just absolutely dominate in the leagues above them. And I thought the teams that got promoted from the National League North and South would just be up and down on a yo-yo. But clearly, it's not worked. There's also York are there as well. So they're doing quite well to, to survive as well. So this is interesting. Let's look in League 2 again. Let's look for Gateshead and Leighton Orient. Leighton Orient uh, getting in 7th. Gateshead getting promoted, which is interesting. So they've, they've got promotion, which is good. So uh, perhaps we will see Gateshead in the Premier League by the end of this episode. That'd be quite good. Sutton got promoted for season 4. They finished 15th. And Halifax also promoted for season 4. They finished 21st. So interesting. Uh, perhaps it is a bit harder for these clubs to get promoted. Gates have done it now, but they've had two seasons to do it from League Two. Leighton Orient in the playoffs as well. They nearly got up there, of course. Uh, Gates have beaten them to it. But uh, been a bit more difficult for Sutton and Halifax. Nearly getting uh, relegated, actually, Halifax. Right, let's go one more season in the future then. Let's go back to the National League and go back to the 21-22 season now. So this is the fourth season that we've simulated. This time, Chesterfield getting a promotion back to the Football League on 95 points and Boreham Wood picking up the playoff win as well. Again, if we look at teams that got relegated from League 2, Grimsby got relegated. They've done all right for themselves in sixth place. Uh, who else got relegated? It might have been Wickham. Wickham suffered two relegations in a row, so they've really felt the pinch. Obviously, they've got no billion pounds, uh, so they've really, really suffered this season without having that kind of money. I guess these other teams are starting to have a bit more money now. Four seasons in the future, let's look at these transfers in the 20, remember 21-22 season now. What kind of money is being spent? Uh, to be fair, not much more than what it has been in the, in the first season. I thought by this stage, we may see a few transfers into the millions, but it's, it's not transpired like that. In fact, it's pretty much the same as it was the first season. Was it like that last season? 1.5 million the season before, actually. And, uh, and and six hundred seventy five thousand pounds the season before that. I didn't think we'd see more higher transfer fees, but clearly not. So again, a pretty interesting season in this one. Uh, Torquay, Braintree, Wickham, and Telford, the ones relegated. I think it's a bit more interesting actually to look at the teams that have been promoted. So if we go back to League Two, remember twenty one twenty two season again to so the fourth season in a row. This time Salford promoted, so they have uh, back to back promotions there. So that's kind of what I expected. I expected some teams to get back to back promotions. Obviously Salford, the first team to actually do that so far. Uh, so well. To Salford, maybe we'll see them in the Premier League pretty soon. Uh, Billericay also got promoted as well, so they've done quite well in 11th place. Leighton Orient, once again in the playoffs, uh, 7th place finish. They've not been 
promoted again, unfortunately. Hopefully they'll get there pretty soon. Sutton still clinging on in League 2, which is looking pretty good. Halifax is still there as well. Uh, I don't think anyone else has been promoted from there as far as I can see. We also need to have a look at League 1 as well because Gateshead got promoted there last season. Looking at League 1, they've done pretty well for themselves, Gateshead, finishing in 8th just outside of the playoff places. What I am happy to see is though that Lincoln City have been promoted uh, from, from the League 1. Obviously, they've done pretty well for themselves in-game. As you know, I'm a Lincoln City fan, so any, anything Lincoln related to football manager, especially promotion to the championship, is fantastic. That bodes well for the future in real life, because football manager is kind of accurate, I've got to say, when it comes to teams doing well. So, well done Lincoln City getting promoted to the championship. On a little bit of a tangent, it's not that much related, it's not that related to the game. Although, Lincoln did get promoted from National League a few seasons ago, so... Without being given a billion pounds, they've made it to the championship. So surely Gateshead should make it there pretty soon. Right, back to the Vanarama National League for the last time in this episode, the fifth season now. Barnet and Dagenham and Redbridge have been promoted. Clearly some good seasons for those two sides as well. Ebbsfleet still not been promoted despite being in and around the playoffs every single season. A few more teams have been relegated, uh, not doing so well. Grimsby doing sort of mid-table. Hartlepool um, actually have come up. Actually, they've been in the National League for a while. Blackpool is the one I was thinking of, not Hartlepool. Blackpool is the one I saw meant to mention. Blackpool in 14th. They haven't had a great season either. Forest Green still down there. Uh, Tranmere this time being relegated. Another team having back-to-back -back relegation. So it's not great. If you come down from League 2, chances are you're going to have a tough time because a few teams have had a tough time now. Uh, Harrogate filed and Havant and Waterlooville also being relegated as well. Again, a few teams that have been promoted are doing pretty well without the money. Uh, I say that. Boston United have been promoted without money. So have York. They're still milling around there. So they're, do I mean, they're in the bottom half of the table avoiding relegation, but they're surviving without the money despite teams like Fylde, Havant, Waterlooville and Harrogate having all that millions of pounds in the bank, they still can't manage to beat Boston and York. A look in League Two then for this final season of the episode and Leighton Orient finally have been promoted. They finished fourth, must have won the playoffs. So well done Leighton Orient, finally getting there after three seasons uh, of trying to get through in the playoffs. Uh, interestingly, Chesterfield and Billericay, both sides have been down in the National League. I think we gave Chesterfield the money, but Billericay haven't had the money. Of course, they came through uh, from the runner of our National League South and they've done extraordinarily well. So this is a, perhaps an anomaly or perhaps it just shows that the money that they have is is somehow better than the billion pounds that we've given to all these other clubs. Boreham Wood doing pretty well down in 11th as well. Uh, who else is in there? Accrington, Northampton being relegated. Uh, Sutton and Halifax in the bottom half of the table, but they're still staying up there. I don't think we've had any team relegated yet that have, we've had promoted. So every team that's been promoted from the National League has managed to survive in League 2, which is good to see. Gateshead in their second season in League 1, not doing as well as the season before. They've come 12th this time around. So... We're five years in the future and the best we've got is an eighth place finish in League One. And then after that, they've gone backwards and finished 12th Gateshead. So I think my hypothesis of three sides in the Premier League by 10 seasons is is not going to happen unless suddenly something happens in the next episode that changes all that. But Gateshead have been the best team so far, which is interesting to see. Uh, Salford, who got promoted the season before, have been relegated. So that's the first relegation we have seen, which is interesting. So despite all the money that Salford have in real life, let alone the billion pounds we've just given them, they haven't been able to survive in League One. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next episode because will, will they bounce back up again or will they start to go down? Will they really start to lose some motivation? The managers start to change. They get new players in. They can't play together. Are we going to see a downward spiral for Salford? So I've got to say, I think this has been a really interesting experiment so far. Uh, I've been surprised by the results. I thought we'd see a lot more domination, but we haven't for some reason. Uh, and that reason probably is to do with reputation, I think. But at the same time, these, these clubs are still, you know, League Two, League One clubs. It's going to be very, very difficult for any League One, League Two club, despite what money they've got, to attract top quality players to come in and play for them. So I think we need to be a bit more realistic with our expectations. So I might revise my my hypothesis of having three teams in the Premier League by 10 seasons. I think I might change that to just one team in the Premier League by 15 seasons, but uh, we'll have to see. Next episode, we're going to go another five years in the future. I think we'll go up to 10 years in total uh, for next episode. So another five years. Hopefully, we'll see some more movement. Hopefully, we'll see some teams coming up and down. It'll be an interesting one, I think. So make sure you join me then to find out just what happens when we give a billion pounds to every single Vanarama National League side. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you do drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and turn notifications on so you never miss a video. And I will see you next time for some more billionaire action.